This video brought to you by Redtail Forge Works. Check them out in the link below. What's up guys? My name's Jonathan. This is my Canon. Happy New Year and thank you for tuning in to another episode of The Canoneer. Now today we're going to be answering some questions that you guys have been asking about in the comments section for a little while all about our Canon, namely how did we make it? So we're going to be bringing you guys in for a nice deep dive on our Canon here. Um, how we made it, what's it made out of, some of the materials, some of the techniques that we use to make our Canon here. Um, and just go ahead and answer those for you guys in this video. So I hope you guys are looking forward to that. I'm really excited to answer those questions for you guys and show you guys how we made it. Um, but let me preface this video by starting off with this is how we made our Canon. This is not how you make Canons in general um, or how Canons in the Revolutionary War and Civil War time would have been made or how most Canons are made. Most Canons are poured um, or cast or um, things like that. Ours is made out of solid steel. We'll talk about that when and bring it in. Um, so that's just to preface on that one. The other preface is if you choose to use the information that we're going to talk about today on how to make cannons and you choose to make your own, um, you do so at your own liability. Um, this is our cannon. We made this. We choose to shoot this ourselves. We're the only ones that shoot this. We also shoot this on a controlled and closed range. Um, so no one else has access to our cannon except for us and we're the only people that take the liability to shoot this. Um, so if you choose to make one using this information, um, please do so at your own risk. Please make good decisions um, when you choose to if you choose to make one, um, shoot it smartly, shoot it safely, um, do so under controlled and safe conditions. So I'm going to bring you guys in for a closer look at our cannon. But before we do that, if you guys haven't done so already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below. Um, we got all kinds of cool videos that we're going to be shooting with our cannon, uh, shooting stuff with it, shooting stuff out of it coming out in the future. And I'm sure you guys are going to want to keep up with that cool and stuff uh, that we got coming out. So go ahead and hit that subscribe button um, while I'm bringing you guys in for a closer look. And we'll talk about how we made our cannon here. Okay guys, let's bring you in for a little closer look. We're going to make our way from the barrel here, the bore, um, all the way down to the other end of the carriage. And let's talk about our cannon here, what it's made out of, and some uh, some details about it. So our cannon here um, is built in the style of a Revolutionary War cannon. Um, in the Civil War, they would have been way more smooth than this. You can see the different bands and things in ours kind of uh, denotes it as a Revolutionary War style cannon. Um, so we built this cannon a couple of years ago just kind of on a wild hair. We had the material in the shop for it, and my uh, my dad kind of had an idea just to uh, see what would happen during the Revolutionary War time. You know, they didn't really have time to dry wood um, or to kiln age it, so they would have had to very quickly cut the wood um, and make a cannon carriage out of it. So this is more what he was curious about. So we wanted to replicate what would have happened during those conditions. We didn't have time to dry wood, and you had to just quickly make a cannon carriage. Um, so when we initially made our cannon here, you guys can see this big, ginormous crack. Um, this was very tight. You couldn't even put a playing card through here when we first originally made this. There's another couple. Um, you can see one here, and there's another one on the other side here. Now, we had to go back in, and when, <laughs> then you could shake the cannon carriage around at one point. Um, we had to go back in and insert these reinforcing bars here, and you guys can see those to hold everything together and make it tight again. Um, now, this is probably what would have happened in the Revolutionary War um, when they didn't really have time to kiln age and dry the wood, so they had to make the cannon carriages very quickly. Um, things would have separated. They didn't have time to dry them, so they would have had to repair them probably as we did or just replace them. They weren't meant to last very long. Um, they were just meant to last at the war, probably get destroyed from time to time. Um, imagine being drug around the nation on a horse. Um, so we just kind of wanted to replicate those conditions and see what would happen um, if you had to make a cannon out of green wood and what those conditions um, just would do to the cannon itself, what would happen to the cannon carriage. So they crack, they shift around, and you have to go back and retighten them. Well, anyway, uh, let's bring you guys in for a closer look at the barrel, and we'll talk about that and what it's made out of and things like that. So our barrel here has a diameter of 1.5 inch um, or about 40 millimeters. We try to shoot anything about 38 millimeters or smaller. Um, has to be able to fit down there and be able to come out um, with a well. Um, so anything that's about 38 millimeters or so fits very well down that bore um, and we can shoot it out of our cannon. So if you guys have any ideas about things that you want us to see shoot out of here, um, let us know. So anyway, our cannon barrel here. Um, this is the thickness of the actual uh, barrel itself. You guys can see this. It's one solid piece of steel. Um, is made out of oil drilling stem pipe. Now this type of pipe you would find in Montana or Wyoming and things like that on a drilling field that they drill into the ground to um, extract oil from. So it's very, very thick, very solid steel pipe. Um, it is a smooth bore cannon. Um, and this type of uh, steel pipe is rated for up to about 7,000 pounds of pressure per square inch. So it's very solid pressure pipe. Um, we did proof this cannon numerous times with a very, very large powder load. We'll talk about that in a little while. Um, so we know this thing can withstand some pressure. So anyway, our cannon here, this is one solid piece of pipe that's gonna be this diameter that runs all the way down our cannon here. You can see it gets a little thicker. Now inside of here, our cannon barrel is going to run the same diameter, gets thicker here, all the way down as well. So one solid piece of pipe 
this diameter runs all the way through this cannon down into here well, i'll bring you guys over to our shop um, where we actually have another cannon barrel that we're working on we'll talk about how we plug the barrel here and what the barrel plugs are made out of and things like that um, but the barrel stops about right here the initial um, one piece of steel that i just mentioned the one solid piece of pipe stops about eh, right here behind the touch hole and it's plugged and i'll bring you guys over to the shop and we'll talk about how it's plugged what it's plugged with um, and some of the materials and how we plugged it when we get over there so anyway, it's plugged down here the barrel's plugged this is a six inch plumber's cap um, pl made out of uh, just you know plumbing pipe cap solid uh, pipe cap here we welded the little knob on the end of it here just to make it period correct you can also use this to pick up the cannon and move it around a little bit now anyway back up to the front of the barrel we move on down and right here you guys can see our cannon gets a little thicker and a little thicker here as well now these are called first and second reinforcements this is second this is the third reinforcement on these types of cannons now here, this is another piece of oil drilling stem pipe. It's very solid. Um, it's just slightly larger than the diameter of this outside pipe here, or the inside of this one. So this pipe fits inside of this pipe. Now this pipe runs all the way back through here as well on the outside of that solid pipe, and it is not plugged. It just stops right here, and it's covered with the um, end cap here. Now the next one is the exact same thing, a slightly larger solid piece of cap, uh, solid uh, drilling stem pipe that goes all the way back here, and it's going to uh, cover up the second reinforcement and the initial barrel right there all the way down in one solid thing down here down into our uh, plumber's cap our end cap here and that's going to all be welded together um, and solidified and we'll talk about how we did that in just a second you can see it's welded together and all that stuff just to help everything to hold everything together now in between here all the little voids and all that sections that are between the two pipes and everything is not very much space at all it's filled completely with lead solid hot molten lead was poured down between this space this space to fill the void the plumber's cap down in here all this space is filled with solid lead so this cannon barrel is solid lead all the way in between the two spaces solid steel for the actual barrel that's going to actually be doing the pressure um, containment and the actual firing so very solid very reinforced cannon um, so we know this thing can withstand a lot of pressure in fact it barely gets hot when we go out and take it to the range when we start shooting it for you know 15 or 20 rounds at a time so a very, very solid cannon. Um, and now we're going to take you guys into a dive into the carriage, um, talk about what's the, come, how we made the carriage, um, and we'll bring you guys over to the shop as well and talk about how the barrel's plugged and things like that. Okay, guys, so our carriage here is made out of red oak um, that we cut at our house. We have a sawmill at our house. This is our powder box that holds all of our fuses and all of our materials that we work with and things like that. It sits right between the carriage. So anyway, we, uh, we made the carriage. We cut all of this wood. We have a uh, sawmill at our house, like I mentioned. I'll throw in some footage of that being all the wood being cut and how we use it. Um, and we cut this wood at our house. And like I mentioned, we didn't dry it. It's not kiln aged or anything like that. Um, I'll throw in some pictures of the barrel being made as well. I'll throw in some pictures of the uh, carriage before it was painted, um, before it was being made and things like that as well. So we work our way up our carriage. Our carriage, like I mentioned, is made out of solid redwood. We cut all of this wood um, by hand. We have a full shop. I'll throw in some pictures of that as well. Um, so all of this material here, all of the uh, fittings and things, my dad's a master blacksmith, so he made all of the fittings for us. Um, all of this stuff, he made all of this in his shop. So all of this is put together. Our wheels here are actually carriage wheels off of an Amish buggy. So they, uh, they work very well um, and they can stand up to some, uh, some destruction and some abuse, which is uh, a good thing for a cannon, especially because we wheel it around so much. This is our lens stock. You guys have seen us use this in the video here. The uh, uh, fuse, the match fuse is gonna go into here, twist around here. My dad made this um, as well. Um, in the blacksmith shop and we cut the wood and stuff from our house as well really pretty piece of uh, um, wood there to make our lens stock so we got our swab here this is going to get wet and we're going to use this to clean the barrel um, i'll post a link down below um, to the guy that makes this for us and our ramrod here same thing post a link to the guy that made that same guy we have our um, wedges here this is what we use to aim the cannon um, we'll do a video on how to aim a cannon if you guys are interested at one of these days just let me know so all the way around our cannon, all of our little tools and holders and things here um, were made in our blacksmith shop. My dad made all these materials as well. So that's a deep dive into our carriage. And that's how we made all the woodwork for this cannon. Okay guys, after all the woodwork was made and our barrel here was made um, and finished and we made sure that it wasn't going to uh, blow up on us, the next step is going to be to weld our trunnions here onto it. And you can see our trunnions are welded in right here through the sides of our um, cannon here. Very, very thick pieces of round stock um, that are going to be used to adjust. You can see they're held in right there. Um, 
can see this comes in and out. You can take this all apart if you need to to move the cannon barrel in and out. So like this, all these things slide out. Um, you can see where it's held in here, a little piece of leather to make sure it doesn't rub. And that's just going to allow the cannon to rotate back and forth to change our elevation um, when we aim it. So once these were welded on, the next thing um, we had to drill our touch hole. And then the next step is to put this underneath the drill press, make sure everything is nice and straight and get it where we want it, and drill one solid hole through the outer uh, third reinforcements lead, second reinforcement lead, and then into the barrel itself. Um, so we have one hole that goes all the way through all three layers of pipe down into the actual barrel itself so we can put our fuse here and touch the cannon off when we actually light it. Okay guys, now that we're over here in the shop, um, I'll give you guys a tour of the shop real quick and we'll talk about how we make our barrels. So this is our shop real fast, this is our forge, we'll talk about how we use that in a second. Um, if you guys haven't seen that show, my dad's the official blacksmith of Taste of History, pretty cool. Uh, check that show out. There's our forge and all that stuff, our uh, power hammer and our wood chops over on the other side there. So this is our shop. Um, so let's talk about how we make a cannon barrel. So this is one of our cannon barrels for a one inch cannon. Um, it's made out of the same type of drilling pipe, you can see it right here. Um, so. Our drilling pipe, quite not quite as thick on this cannon, um, so we don't shoot as much powder charge out of this, usually 200 grains. We have another one that's this size, um, so this is just one of our, our extra cannon blades. So we have a full cannon this size. If you guys want to see that one of these days, just let me know. So anyway, solid down here, down to the end. You can see it kind of swells here, and there's a pin through there. So what we did, um, we stuck our cannon barrel here. You guys can see where the color changes are at, um, where it goes from nice and shiny silver all the way to this kind of rough look. So we put it in our gas forge here, um, all the way down in there, that end got it really, really, really flaming hot. Now, if you flip it over on the other end, you guys can see the barrel plug that's put down in here. Um, and our barrel plug is just slightly larger than that one inch diameter bore. So it's about a one and a quarter, just a little bit. So while this thing is flaming hot, um, the barrel plug goes to about right here or so. Um, what we did is we drive that barrel plug, that slightly larger barrel plug, down this. It takes a couple of heatings to get this thing really flaming hot, and you just drive it continuously down and down and down and down until eventually um, is going to be flush here, and you can see there it's flush, um, and that's the end of our barrel. And that's how we plug the barrel here. So you quench it really quick, it cools everything down, gets everything solid, um, makes everything tight, and that's going to be made out of H13 steel. So this is very, very solid steel. Take it over to the drill press, um, and you drill a hole all the way through the original barrel, outer barrel, and that pin in the middle. And then this is just 1040 steel um, that's driven through and peened over on both sides to hold it in. So this barrel is plugged and pinned. Um, so that's how we made the other cannon barrel as well, the larger cannon. This is just one of our smaller cannon barrels. So our cannon barrels made the exact same way. Um, and then the sleeve goes over the top of this down here, and then there's another sleeve that goes over the top of that the end cap, and then it's all filled with lead around the outside of this. So this is what's containing the pressure, and then all that other stuff is containing the pressure of all this stuff together. So one ginormous pressure container um, for our barrel here. Okay, guys. So now that we've kind of covered what the carriage is made out of, how the barrel's made, what it's made out of, um, how the trunnions are welded on, how everything's kind of put together. Um, we're going to talk about what we did to proof this cannon after everything was kind of done. It wasn't painted yet. We hadn't painted it. Um, it was just kind of raw steel, raw wood. Nothing was uh, totally finished on it yet. Nothing was completely finished. So we want to make sure it was safe. Let's talk about how we proofed this cannon, um, which means we put a whole lot of powder in it and we way more than it needs. And we shot it just to make sure it wasn't going to explode. So when we knew that we dropped down to a normal powder uh, load charge out of this cannon um, to shoot it like we wanted to, that it would be safe to do so. So we talk about in our uh, regular videos that we usually shoot about 400 grains of black powder out of our cannon here. Um, so we put a 400 powder, uh, grain powder charge in and then a ball in front of it and shoot that out of here. Now for proofing this cannon, what we did is we put 1200 grains of black powder down the barrel of our cannon here and we basically just shove an entire hamburger or hot dog bun down here and pack it in with the ramrod really, 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 really hard. Um, that hot dog bun's going to provide pressure. Um, if you don't do that, it's just gonna poof and put a nice giant poof of smoke out of the end of it. You have to have a lot of pressure in to build up um, an in plug to build up pressure behind it. So that hot dog, when you shove it, the hot dog bun, when you shove it down in there, is going to expand and make a lot of pressure. Um, you fire that out of there, and that's going to contain a lot of that pressure and put a lot of resistance in it. So we put 1,200 grains of black powder in our cannon here to proof it um, with a hot dog bun. That's a lot of powder in this thing. 
had no problem sustaining that. Um, and then we went on to shoot 800 grains with the same thing. We shot two of those with a hot dog bun, 800 grains, twice the normal load. And then we put 800 grains in with an actual projectile to proof it um, and touched it off from quite a distance with a very long fuse um, just to make sure that everything was going to safe. We did that with all of them. Um, very long distance fuse just to make sure that everything was safe to, uh, to, to function with. So now that we kind of knew everything was safe to use, um, we went ahead and finished assembling the cannon. Um, we painted it. Now our cannon here, um, I'll post some pictures of what it looked like before it was can painted. Um, it was painted with something called milk paint. It's a very traditional style paint that would have been found in the era. And we went with red, a very traditional style color that would have been found for carriages and buggies and things in that era in the Revolutionary War. Um, so very, very um, final step, assembly, painting, making sure everything looks good. Then we painted the barrel and um, make sure everything doesn't uh, wear out and get rusty um, on our cannon here. So we keep this thing in our wood shop. You guys can see that there's a little bit of sawdust on it um, to keep it out of the weather. But we've had this thing for about two or three years or so. Um, like I mentioned, we didn't actually plan on starting a YouTube video. Um, so I don't act our YouTube channel. So I don't actually have any videos of us making this. So I'm going to be splicing in a lot of pictures and talking about how we made it um, along the way as well. Okay, guys, and now on to our photo section of our uh, how to build a cannon here. Um, so you can see our barrel here is on our stand. We didn't have our carriage built yet. This is just how we... Uh, manipulated it around in the shop. Um, you can see our barrel here. It's got the uh, initial barrel, the um, original drilling stem pipe. Um, you can see the second reinforcement and the third reinforcement outer pipes. Um, you can see how they're slid into one another in this section here. We've got our trunnions welded on. I don't think I mentioned earlier, our trunnions are made out of O1 steel. Um, you can see they're way longer than they need to be at this point. We haven't cut them yet. Um, you can see we don't have our, our carriage built. It's just sitting on a little metal stand. Um, but you can see our, our barrel here, um, no painting, um, it's just uh, raw steel, it hasn't been totally finished yet. Our plumber's cap is on the end there, uh, everything's filled with lead at this point. We don't have the reinforcing bands on or, or anything like that, but you can just see the cannon here, um, just in its raw kind of barrel form. So same picture, different angle, and you can see how everything's nice and polished up uh, after it's been welded and getting ready to be uh, cleaned and everything like that. So everything's nice and uh, polished, you can see our stand here. Um, and our barrel, this is what it looks like on the inside underneath all the uh, paint um, and underneath the reinforcing bands. So here's a, a close-up picture. You can see our trunnions have been cut um, to the proper length. We've already got our carriage built at this point. We've got a couple pictures of our carriage. I'll show you guys in a second. Um, you can see we've already uh, added the reinforcing bands, the uh, uh, round stock, um, just to make our cannon look a little prettier and polish everything up um, around the edges where the uh, two pipes meet um, and where the lead was poured. You can see all the bands have been added at this point. Um, same thing from the side, you can see everything's uh, got the reinforcing bands added together. Um, trunnions have been trimmed down. You can see our plumber's cap has got the um, um, bands added around it as well, just to kind of make everything look a lot prettier and kind of uh, clean up those edges. So here's our carriage here, very first picture of our carriage. You can see our axles put on the uh, um, carriage there. You can see some of the um, trunnion holders up at the top. You can see the uh, uh, raw wood before it was painted. Um, just kind of see what it looked like before we got too far into that. And another side view, you can see the uh, raw wood. Everything's on there, our uh, blacksmith fittings and things. Nothing is painted, nothing's finished yet. Um, everything's just on there, getting kind of roughed out, making sure everything looks good. There's another view of our carriage. Um, before everything's put together, you can see all of the uh, big nails and big rivets and everything holding stuff together inside of our carriage here. So here's a picture of our cannon before um, it was painted. You can see our uh, barrel bands haven't been added yet. Our reinforcing bands to make everything pretty hasn't been added yet. Um, just our plain black barrel um, with nothing on it. Not just the, just made it look a little decent. Kind of test fitting, make sure everything fits together here in our carriage. Make sure the, the barrel fits. Make sure everything moves around like it should before we uh, finalize everything and make sure everything's uh, cut and moved and, and uh, tacked together like it should. So another close-up picture of that. You can see our trunnions are still long at this point. We haven't cut those yet. Um, this is just the test fitting stage just to kind of make sure everything looks um, and fits like it should. So you can see here, this is our very first picture of our finished cannon when it was painted. Um, nice and red and everything's nice and pretty. Um, like I mentioned, this is painted with milk paint, very traditional paint for the time. Um, very nice and pretty red. Everything nice and good, ready to go with our nice and finished cannon. Like I mentioned, we have a sawmill at our house, and this is what we use to cut all the wood for the cannon carriage with. Um, you can see it running here. Um, we cut all of our cannon carriage out of uh, red oak, 
Um, uh, like I mentioned, we didn't dry it, we didn't kilnage it or anything like that. It was made out of totally green wood, um, just to kind of see what would happen to a carriage that was made out of green wood that you had to make real quick um, during the Revolutionary War time period and Civil War time period and things like that when they didn't have time to age and they just had to get them on the battlefield real quick. Um, it does crack, <laughs> so um, they shift around a little bit. So you can see our sawmill running here, um, and this is what we use to cut all of the wood with. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed learning about how we made our cannon here. Um, if you did, please drop down below and hit that like button. It's really going to help spread the word about how we made our cannon here. Maybe somebody will find this information useful. Now, once again, if you do want to make one of these, please do so at your own risk. Um, take this information accordingly. Just be safe with it. Um, they are fun. Just be safe if you decide to build one and or shoot one. Now, anyways, guys, um, if you did enjoy this, go ahead and hit that like button. If you haven't done so already, hit that subscribe button. Now, if we didn't answer all your questions about the cannon here, if you have anything you want to know, just leave them in a comment below. Um, if you've got any cool ideas about things you want to see us shoot with the cannon or shoot out of the cannon, also drop those in a comment below and we'll hopefully get those out in a future video. And once again, guys, my name's Jonathan. This is my cannon. Thanks for tuning in to this episode about how we made our cannon here, and I'll catch you guys on the next one.